Hi, uh, welcome back to what is probably going to be my final tutorial in the series of an introduction to Jashaka. Uh, what this tutorial will cover is the four smaller modules that are on Jashaka, which is the colorizer tracker, the encoder, the key. I've already gone over the encoder and it's pretty straightforward, uh, but we'll have a look at everything anyway and just go through everything. So th they're found on the desktop. When you click on the desktop, yeah, they're in the middle columns. So colorize tracker, key, and encoder, and you kind of guess from the names what they do. To rather than clicking on here, you can also access them from the top here. If you click on this little arrow, they're right at the bottom. Colorize key, tracker, and player. Uh, but, 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 well, they don't have they have player there, but it's you've got encoder down here. Um, as you can see, I'm guessing they didn't put much importance to them, seeing as they're not on this side, but I'm guessing the problem, the reason was they wanted them to be like just an add-on, but uh, they're not really even an add-on to be honest. Uh, half of them, they're just not worth it. Uh, we'll go into the colorize and we'll just have a look at what it does and how to do it. So we click on the image layer. Let's bring in our image. Zoom out a bit, let it fit. And then we can play it now. Obviously, the colorize is does whatever as the name suggests, just change the color. So click on colorize CPU, and then here you've got this little wheel, and you can kind of basically just move that wheel around. And as you can see on the right hand side, these values are moving, and by move, changing these values, you can adjust the color aspects. Then you just render it out or take a snapshot at your desired um, color. The, uh, I know uh, it looks ooh, really fancy because you've got a color wheel, but it actually doesn't do that much because it's got shadows, midtones, and highlights, but it doesn't let you select them. So I don't know what would constitute allowing me to select them, to be honest. Uh, it's got keyframes, which again would be virtually useless. Uh, it's got this thing called Use GPU, which is, I'm guessing if you've got a graphics card, I don't actually have a graphics card because this is a laptop, so I'm get you never know, maybe with that it comes out a bit better. But uh, as you can see, it's it's fairly rudimentary, and there's no difference, in my opinion, between this and the colorize effect in the animation layer here, because the controls are exactly the same. So, in my view, you're better off just using that one because then you can layer other effects on top and or underneath to get a final composition. This really, I, I don't see it being of any use at all. Uh, so, my advice to you is just ignore it, don't use it. Okay, uh, the second one is the encoder we'll look at. So, the encoder I've briefly talked over before. Basically, you've just got any of your videos, you bring it in here, and then you can export it out without having to go through the editing module. Unfortunately, you can only do PAL NTSC, although, as I was saying, I'm, I'm not an expert on it, but I would have thought if you're using PAL uh, widescreen, that might uh, fit the S720 resolution. I'm not 100% sure. I'm, I'm not an expert on that, unfortunately. And then you have your encoding format. As, as I've said in some of my previous tutorials, DivX is probably the best one to go in this one. And then just click on Start Encoding. Pretty simple pretty easy to use. Uh, then we'll look at the Kia. So the Kia here is what you'd want the Kia to be in effect in the animation module, which the reason is because here in the animation module, if I let's say wanted to, let me delete that, key out this foreground, go click on layers, CPU effect, chroma key. Great. But how do I know what color this is? Because it's asking me for RGB values. I don't know the RGB values for that color there and so you just end up having to play around and people often when they go oh I don't know how to use shark it doesn't make any sense well it's probably because of this that they're saying it doesn't make any sense because at the end of the day you have to play around with it until you find out which values work obviously in this case because this is all white is relatively easy for me to find out said value but you see the point where I'm going from an easy way was obviously to go into the key, which is what I've done in a lot of my previous videos. Go to your key layer and bring in your video. Now go to your base layer and bring in the video you want underneath. And then click on CPU key, and it actually got an eyedropper tool. 
So you eye drop it and you bring it over here. But if you actually look here, it's over white. But if you look in the top left hand corner, it's over black. The reason is for some weird reason, it's actually taking whatever's in the actual desktop, not in here as such. So what you need to do is come over here to the left hand side. Wait, if I, uh, you need to click on sky replacement because that's the one we're gonna click the eyedropper tool, come over here and click over here on the left hand side and then you can see it actually cleans it out very nicely very easily and then what you do is you go all the way here to axis and that actually shows you the values 191 142 142 256 256 256 if you then plug these into here what you'll find is that you'll get this cut out and then from there you could just fine tune as you wish and that is the only reason why I recommend using the Kia module here. It, I wouldn't recommend it for doing final keying. I definitely do that in animation module because regardless of what you're doing, more often than not, your two shots got different lighting, uh, different could even be different quality. Uh, you might be wanting to put other elements on top and in the animation module you can do that. In the Kia module all you can do is just put one thing on top of another thing as a flat image. Uh, so in that way it's limited. I would only use it just to use this color picker tool to give you an op give you a starting groundwork in terms of figures and then plug it into the animation module. And finally we're going to go to the tracker module. So the tracker module here I've loaded something earlier on uh, is as you can see what happens is you load your image layer and this one is a very very slow and it's going to be even slower seeing as I'm using uh, I'm recording so I'm using up a load of CPU power then click on red point I'm gonna check it and as you can see a red point has appeared and then what we do is we put that in the position that we want it to want to track and then we can adjust the radius of the point, the search radius, so a higher search radius will mean that it's less likely to lose it, especially if you've got really juddery movement. Again, sensitivity is the same thing. Check some tolerance, I honestly don't know what that means. Once you've done all that, you can actually render it out, and this is what you'd end up getting. The reason I'm not showing you doing it live is because, as I said, it takes up a lot of CPU power, and I don't want this thing to crash while I'm playing it. But here's one I made earlier, basically. So as you can see, the point is actually being tracked, now that being said, I have no idea where to go from there, because if we saw After Effects, for example, what it would, what you'd do is you'd you'd have a uh, you'd you'd have the option of applying that somehow to another layer, to a null layer or something, uh, that data from that, and then from there you could link it to another layer, and the layer would track it, and therefore it looks like it's seamlessly integrated. Here it doesn't do that and I think that's basically what's happened they they made the tracker module but they forgot to actually integrate it into anywhere because there is no way I know of and that I have come across for bringing this information of that point into anywhere else in the tracker module and so far to date I've not seen any way of doing that uh, if anyone does come across a way of doing it even by pure chance please 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 put up a tutorial let me know because if it could do tracking then the, even the fact that it doesn't have masking it still would make it a lot lot better and a lot lot easier to use do a lot of things I, as some of you may know I've got a tutorial out uh, at the moment with a sky replacement where I do do tracking using voodoo but for simple pan shots you don't always need something as powerful as voodoo and then go through blender when you if this was working you could just do it here within the program itself as I said unfortunately I have no idea of how to actually apply that uh, maybe one day I will if I do find out I'll let you guys know definitely but that is the tracker module so at the moment it as I said it does track it just doesn't let you apply that track data anywhere else as far as I can see and I don't know any way, other way of using it uh, so really it's quite useless to be honest <laughs> So those were the final modules in Chasharka. I hope everything's been okay. I hope I've explained everything well and simply enough. 
if you have any questions feel free to let me know uh, I'll do my best to help you uh, to answer your questions obviously I'm, I'm not a master on Jashaka and I it's not like I program the thing to know everything about it but I'll do I'll certainly do my best and uh, thank you for watching thank you bye